Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Chemistry and we're going to look at using Q equals MC delta T in order to calculate enthalpy changes. In terms of the specification then, it's towards the end of learning aim A3. You can see down the bottom here that we need to understand the measurement and using Q equals MC delta T in order to calculate enthalpy changes. So the outcomes for this video, we're going to look at what's meant by specific heat capacity first, and then we're going to look at two different experiments or two different methods that we can use to measure enthalpy changes, and then how we use that experimental data to calculate delta H. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated, and please take advantage of the likes and comment features. Let me know what we think. Okay, so what's meant by the term specific heat capacity of water? Well, the definition of this would be the energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one Kelvin. And this value happens to be 4.18. So in other words, it requires 4.18 joules to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one Kelvin. Now you don't need to memorize this number, you will be supplied it in the question or in your data book in the exam. So if we had 100 grams of water, it would require 100 times this energy to raise the temperature by one Kelvin. So to go from 300 to 301 for 100 grams of water, it would be 418 joules. Slightly more complex then, if we were to reduce the temperature of water, so if temperature was to cool from 310 to 300, water would actually be releasing or removing 4,180 joules because I'm dropping 100 grams by 10 kelvins. Now there's a mathematical equation we can use to make this calculation easier. And the equation looks like this. So it's worth pointing out that all of our reactions, the surrounding or surroundings is going to be water in both examples that I'm going to use further on. So we are measuring the energy change in the surroundings, which will be water. So Q stands for the heat energy change. M is the mass of the water. C stands for the specific heat capacity of the water. And delta T is the change in temperature of the water. So it's all about the water. I must stress that here because this is where students make the mistake, particularly with mass, they often use the wrong mass. And I'm gonna make that very clear when I do some exam style questions in a couple of minutes. But first, let's go back to those couple of examples I used on the previous slide, just to show where these numbers came from. So if I'm going to measure the energy change for this first statement, energy is Q, which is equal to the mass of the water. In this case, it's 100. Specific heat capacity is a constant. 4.18, I'd be supplied with that information in the question. And the change in temperature, well, the change from 300 to 301, that's just one. 100 times 4.18 times by one is 418 joules. So the energy change in water from that temperature change is 418 joules. The other one I looked at was when the temperature decreased, but again, I'm just looking at energy change and energy change is Q. The mass of water is 100 again. Specific heat capacity, that's the constant, it won't change, and we're given that. This time the temperature change from 310 to 300, so it's 10 this time. So I've now got an energy change of water of 4,180 joules. So now let's look at the two different methods then of how we manage to, to get this data in order to carry out these calculations. So the data must come from experiments. And these experiments are called calorimetry. Now, we're always in chemistry going to use the surroundings as water, always, okay? But there's two types of calorimetry that we're going to use. We can either do calorimetry where the reactions actually occur within the solution or within water, or if it's a burning reaction, which involves burning a substance, we will use the substance to heat, so we'll, the energy released by the fuel to heat up some water. So first up then, using reactions in solutions, your apparatus would look a little bit like this. 
you'd have a polystyrene cup and you try and insulate it with a glass beaker and a lid to try and reduce or minimize heat loss to the surroundings. We need a thermometer to measure temperature and we'd have the reaction mixture in that polystyrene cup. So the measurements we'd be taking here is that we must have known quantities there. We must carefully measure those quantities, whether it's volumes and concentrations um, of solutions, or perhaps you're adding a solid, you'd have to have a known mass. We also need to make sure we record the initial and final temperatures so we can work out a temperature change. Let's have a look at a specific example then and how we're going to use this data. So we know we're going to have to use Q is equal to MC delta T. So the first thing we're going to do from this information in the question is we're going to calculate the energy transferred either to or from the water. So I'm going to quantify the energy using Q is equal to MC delta T. So let me start. So Q is equal to MC delta T. Now, the biggest mistake people make is they automatically, they jump to the assumption that the mass is 2.3 because they see this in the question. And that is wrong because the first step is to work out the energy transferred to or from the water. And the water isn't 2.3 grams, okay? To work out the mass of the water, we just use the volume. So the mass of water is 30. That's because water has the density of one gram per centimeter cubed. So to work out my Q, M is 30. Specific heat capacity, I would be given that in the question as 4.18. And delta T, they've actually told me that the temperature decreased by 9.4, so I don't even need to work that out. So I just put those into my calculator and I get a value of 1178.76. And I know that that's measured in joules. So I've done the first part, I've worked out Q, but that's not the same as enthalpy change. So Q and delta H are not the same. Q is the energy absorbed or released by the water. Delta H was the change in enthalpy of the chemical system. So what I need to do is convert from joules to kilojoules per mole because delta H is measured in kilojoules per mole. The first part is easy. Converting from joules to kilojoules, I just need to divide by a thousand. So step one is quite easy. So step one, 1 1.17876 kilojoules. All I've done is divide my answer here by a thousand to get it into kilojoules. So that was easy. To get it per mole, what I need to do is to divide by the number of moles of reactant. So that's where the 2.3 grams comes in. I've got to find the moles of lithium chloride. Moles is mass over MR. The MR for lithium chloride, chlorine is 35.5 and lithium is 7, so that's 42.5. So my moles of lithium chloride, put that in my calculator, we get 0 0.054118. So that's my moles. So now what I do is I now divide my kilojoules by my moles to get kilojoules per mole. What do I have here? Put that on my calculator. I get 21.78129. That's now kilojoules per mole. Not quite finished, okay, because what I have to do is what you'll have picked up in previous videos is the sign of delta H is essential, whether it's exothermic or endothermic exothermic or endothermic. So let's go back to the question. What's actually happening here? Well, the temperature of the water decreased. That means the enthalpy must have increased. This was an endothermic reaction. So I'm going to put a plus sign here to emphasize that it's endothermic. I've been asked for three significant figures as well, so I must make sure I do that. 21.8 kilojoules per mole. So there's two stages to this calculation. There's working out the energy transferred to or from the water, and then there's the converting into delta H. Do not make that mistake with your mass. Moving on to the second 
type of experiment then that we can use to get this data. So if you're trying to calculate the enthalpy of combustion where you are burning a fuel, you are going to need to use a copper can or a copper calorimeter. And this time, again, you'd insulate it, we'll have a thermometer and we just have a copper can of water because what we're going to do is we're going to use our fuel that we're trying to calculate the enthalpy of combustion for in a fuel burner and we would light it and we'd heat up the water. So what we're doing is we're using the exothermic reaction of the fuel, that energy will go into the water and we measure the energy change of the water. So these are the measurements that we would need then. We would need to know the volume or mass of that water. We'd need to know the initial temperature of the water and the final temperature of the water so we can get a, a delta T. We must also though measure the mass of the fuel and that's going to allow us to work out the moles of the fuel so we can work out the delta H. So here's an example then. So this is an example of using an ethanol burner, an ethanol spirit burner, and we're going to work out the enthalpy of combustion of ethanol using Q equals MC delta T. So we're going to use the same two stages. This, the, the theory and the idea of the calculation is exactly the same. The first thing we're going to do is work out the energy transferred to the water in this case, because it's an, it's an increase in temperature of water. So Q is equal to MC delta T. Now this is where people get the M wrong again. So it's the energy transferred to the water. So it's the, it's the mass of the water. In this case, it's 200 grams because we know that one centimeters cubed is one gram. So it's 200. Specific heat capacity of water is 4.18. Again, you'd be supplied that in the question. I do need to work out my delta T, the temperature 41.5 take away 21 is 20.5. So the temperature increase is 20.5. And that's going to equal, get my calculator out, 17138 and that's measured in joules so that's the energy that's being absorbed by the water second step then is to convert this energy joules into an enthalpy change delta h the first step is to convert joules to kilojoules so we divide by a thousand that's quite straightforward that's 17.138 kilojoules so divide by a thousand there we go now I need to divide by the number of moles and that's where the mass of the spirit burner comes in. So I need to work out how much ethanol has been used. So 102.56 take away 101.88. That means that 0.68 grams of fuel have been used. So I'm going to work out my moles of ethanol. I need to work out my MR of ethanol. The mass is 0.68. The MR 2 times 12 for carbon, 5 times 1, 1 times 16, plus 1. So the MR of ethanol is 46. So my moles of ethanol, 0.014783. So now what I do is I divide my kilojoules by my moles. So I'm going to get kilojoules per mole. I get a value here of... 1159.3 kilojoules per mole. I'm not quite finished though, because what I do need to do is I need to ensure I put the sign for the enthalpy change, because that's important. In this case, the temperature of the water increased, which means the enthalpy has decreased. It's an exothermic reaction, so I must put that negative sign there. So my answer is minus. 1159.3 kilojoules per mole and that's the end of this video so thanks for watching hope that was useful and good luck